Again, it is my pleasure and honor to introduce 2009 Distinguished Alumnus, Mr. Lynn Pernick. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it very much. Really happy to be here and uh, really enjoying the weekend so far, uh, especially the poker tournament. That was awesome. Um, what I want to do today, I thought since we've been here all day since this morning that maybe we could uh, spice things up a little bit. So I'm going to walk through a couple of slides and then we're going to get into a little audience participation and uh, we'll sort of treat it like a pop quiz. We'll see how much you guys really know about the sports industry as it exists right now. Um, first, just as a by way, a little bit of background, Turnkey Sports Entertainment, it's a holding company. Uh, which has two wholly owned subsidiaries, Turnkey Search, which is an executive recruiting company. Uh, you know, recent searches, we just put in a CEO of the Miami Dolphins, Mike D. Uh, done all sorts of CEO, COO, all the way down to really manager and coordinator level positions. So we do a lot of executive recruiting in a normal year. We fill about 80 positions a year in sports and entertainment. Uh, this year we won't come anywhere near that number. Uh, but really proud of what we've been able to do on the search side. And then we have a separate company, Turnkey Intelligence, that we're going to actually talk about today and present some data, which really is at the center of tracking how consumers perceive <coughs> our industry, what they think of us, what they think of the teams and the leagues, and whether or not things are registering with them. One of the very interesting findings that we came up with recently was we asked sports fans across the country whether or not they were aware of and could remember league sponsors. And then we asked the exact same question to uh, what we call our turnkey sports poll, uh, which is people that own sports teams or run sports teams. And there was a wide divergence <coughs> of opinion. People in the industry believe that fans, 80% of them, know who the sponsors are. But the fans themselves, only 20% know who the sponsors are. So people in our industry are going to be confronting a challenge, which is there's a little bit of a disconnect between what we think we're accomplishing vis-a-vis -vis fans and what we're actually accomplishing. Um, I mean, this is just a quick slide to let you know uh, that we we work with now almost every professional sports team. I think there's 122 professional sports teams. Uh, and you know between our deal with the NFL, uh, we work with all 32 NFL teams collecting data for them, 32 for 32. We work with 25 out of the 30 Major League Baseball teams. Uh, and we look, work with the majority of the NBA and the NHL teams. We also work with a large number of the MLS teams. We work uh, in almost every NASCAR track. Uh, the IRL is a client, uh, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. We're very heavy into open wheel racing. Uh, we're into golf. Uh, and we collect data not only for the properties, but also for the sponsors. So at this point, we're pretty heavily penetrated into a real niche, okay? And our niche is understanding the perceptions of sports fans and helping properties and sponsors monetize that information. Um, so, you know, I wanna go through some of the things that you might be reading in the Sports Business Journal. Sports Business Journal is a, a really terrific partner for us. <laughs> and the Sports Business Journal, whenever you raise their name, you hear thunder. <laughs> Because that's how powerful they are. <laughs> so um, they're listening right now, so we'll make sure to, to say nice things about Abe and his crew there. Um, we've been doing a series in the Sports Business Journal now for about two years, uh, which is to track how fans perceive and are aware of league sponsors. Um, and this is just sort of a, a quick slide that I think gives us a pretty uh, surprising result, which is of all the leagues and all the money being spent to make sure fans are aware of who sponsors are, the one that appears to be doing the best is MLS. Okay, there you go. 
Um, very loyal fans in soccer. Very, very loyal. And I remember when we started this series in Sports Business Journal, Doug Quinn, the president of SUM, called me up because originally we were not going to include MLS in tracking all their sponsors. We were just going to do the big four plus NASCAR. And ultimately, we also decided to include the PGA. But MLS wound up doing such a great job on this study. And even in this, this is likelihood to trust a sponsor's product. MLS outdistances every other sport. And I think that's a real testament to Casey and a lot of the people that are working at MLS in how hard they work to make sure that their fans are not only aware of who the sponsors are, but go out and buy those products. Um, if you're interested. <laughs> um, so, you know, I got a couple of sponsor awareness stuff. This is likelihood to regularly consume a sponsor's product. And, and in this one, really NASCAR came out the best. NASCAR has very, very loyal fans, both avids and casuals, and you know, just is just by a shade out distancing the PGA. Um, and then you sort of get to baseball. And you know, everybody asserts that baseball is an older demographic and maybe baseball is starting to tail off a little bit. That's not we, what we find in research. Baseball is actually doing great. Baseball is in fantastic shape in so many ways. It's got the cheapest average ticket price. It's got the most inventory that's available for fans. It's the least expensive to consume. And I think what this shows you is that fans are really connecting to the sponsors of baseball. Um, I'm going to go through now each of the leagues and I'm going to put up a slide that looks like this one for each league in a couple of the big categories, the sponsor categories. And what I'm going to ask you guys to do is just with a show of hands, I'm going to give you two choices. For example, on this slide, before I would have shown it, I would have asked you, who is the category sponsor in Major League Baseball in the credit card category? And I'd give you a couple choices. And I'd just like to see if you guys actually know who the category sponsors are. And I think you can see from this slide that what we found in our research is that it's not always the case that fans know who the category sponsor is. So let's give this a try and see how we do here. Um, who is the category sponsor in baseball for shipping? Okay, let's say overnight shipping. Uh, is it, who, who thinks it's UPS? Who thinks it's FedEx? Okay. Who thinks it's DHL? Okay. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> where's Where's Kayla? Kayla, you're doing a good job. <laughs> um, yes, DHL is correct. However, uh, fans, baseball fans, and especially casual fans, but particularly avid fans, thought that UPS. So there's a disconnect right there that baseball and DHL has to address. All right, let's try another one. How about QSR, quick service restaurant? Who thinks it's McDonald's for baseball? Raise your hand if you think it's McDonald's. Raise your hand if you think it's Taco Bell. <coughs> Couple people on Taco Bell. Raise your hand if you think it's Subway. <laughs> What, what's, half, what's half a hand? What is that? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> Taco Bell. Uh, and, and, and you saw that people in the audience here weren't quite sure, and that's in fact, baseball fans are not quite sure. Taco Bell is clearly not standing out as the category sponsor in Major League Baseball. All right, the beer category. Miller? Coors, Anheuser-Busch. I'm going to give you a chance to change this answer. Just think about this. Miller, who thinks it's Miller? Who thinks it's Coors? Who thinks it's AB? You guys are sticking with AB. OK, I couldn't get you off of it. Yes, AB <laughs> <laughs> is correct. All right. I'm like Doc. I'm just testing. I'm always testing. Uh, all right, I want to switch over to MLS and just get through a couple MLS slides, which I think are really terrific. Uh, the way to read this 